everybody and welcome to a new course in, uh, and this course is called computational thinking now we've seen the first videos about this course in this part we will talk about the unit of uh, programming fundamentals in python in this unit we will cover two things what uh, the first part is called uh, the definition of computational thinking the different components and the second part is actually fundamentals of programming so in the uh, uh, the main focus of this is computational thinking and algorithm. We have different learning outcome of this. The first learning outcome of this, computation, uh, of this video is what is computational thinking? The second part is the components, the key components of computational thinking. The third part is applying different examples uh, in, uh, so we, we can explain what is computational thinking. And the last part is that we look at uh, algorithms and real-life examples in algorithms. So the first part, what is computational thinking? In layman terms, if you just think about it plain English for the average person, you have a problem. This problem needs to be solved and need to be solved using the help of computers. And the, uh, to do that, you need to understand the problem uh, yourself first as a human in order to translate it into uh, a problem that can be solved by the computer. So the process of uh, formulating an, uh, a solution to a problem that could be understood by human and solved by a computer, that is the uh, computational thinking. Now, the, the computational thinking itself is composed into different parts. The first part is decomposition. You need to understand the problem and, comp and, and, and break it down. The second part is abstraction. Abstraction is that you need, you give an information and then you actually need to focus on the main information. The third part is pattern recognition. The pattern recognition is there's in general, in life, there are patterns that exist within a problem. And then you're trying to identify these patterns. Why? So they can actually solve, help you solve the, the problem. The last part, which actually take a major part, is finding the solution to these problems. And that is called algorithms, okay? So we're gonna look at each component. We'll start with decomposition first. Decomposition, in, in a layman term, as I said, is that you have a big problem. You wanna break it into manageable, uh, smaller problems in order, in order to solve the bigger picture. So the definition of it, here is the definition. Decomposition is the process of breaking down a complex problem or a system into smaller and more manageable parts. This cannot be achieved without a thorough understanding of the problem. I'm giving you an example here. This example, if you look at this, this is a shape. Now, this is a simple shape just to understand the idea. Uh, if I ask you to solve or find the area of this shape, now, you usually go back to previous experiences that, or previous problems that you've seen. Now, you might have seen this problem, you might have not. But for the first time, you look at it and say, okay, I haven't, this doesn't look like any shapes that I've seen before in terms of rectangles, uh, triangles, uh, uh, a square, all of these things, because the, 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 the area for these shapes are known. So if I can break these into something that I've already known, and I know already, and have different, I have the equations ready for it, or the solution for it ready, then it becomes easy. So this problem can be composed into a rectangle, if you can see that, and a rectangle. The top part is your rectangle, and the bottom part is your rectangle. So now all, the problem becomes simple, or trivial, finding the area for the rectangle, add it to the area of the uh, 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 triangle, and then you're done. And that is decomposition. The second part, which is pattern recognition. The pattern recognition is, is a tricky thing, but and it takes experience. But as you understand the basics of it, then you can, and with, that, with enough examples, you can start recognizing these patterns, okay? So what is pattern recognition? Pattern recognition is the process of looking and finding similarities. Patterns may exist within the same problem, or may exist in different problems. Pattern recognition is important uh, to get a deeper understanding of the problem and formulating a possible solution, okay? So that is pattern recognition. Here's another example. So if I give you 
this example and say, find the sum of all these numbers. Now, these are simple numbers. Of course, this can be a lot more than these. But if you notice that if I have no computers, no calculators, if I tell you to solve it, you try to say 2 plus 2 is 4. Again, keep the total in your hand. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. And then you can see that I'm already making a mistake. So if there's a way that I can recognize these patterns and come up with an equation to solve it, it might be easier. For example, if I look at this, I notice that there are five twos, there are uh, uh, four tens and three fives. So the solutions, I can take the number of repetition, okay, repetition, the pattern, and multiply it by the number, by the number itself. So two times five becomes 10, four times five becomes, uh, four times 10 becomes 40, and then three times five becomes 15, and the answer is 65. So that is a simple example, but you will see more and more of these as we go uh, along in this course. The last, this uh, third part is called abstraction. Abstraction in real life, when you are given a problem to solve, uh, you need to focus on the things that are critical to your solutions. You don't want to be distracted by all the other information. Now, again, this comes with experience. But if you think, if the basic thing that you need to do is that you need to say, what is important to my solution, what is not? What plays a factor into solving the problem and what is not? The ones that play a factor, those are important. The ones that are not, you, uh, you don't worry about them. So we have here, we have the definition of it, the process of identifying important information and ignoring irrelevant details. A key to this process to look for information and facts that are necessary to solve the problem. Again, this is the problem that we had before. Now, usually when you're given the problem, you're giving details, too much details. Now, I'm giving you again here a small example. Now, in this shape, we're given, for example, the, 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 this, side, this side is A is equal five, and then you have B equal five, uh, five again, and then you have the length is five, and the width is six, and then we have color blue. Now, I know the equations of, to calculate the area of a rectangle and then the, uh, the area of a triangle are known, but color does not play any role in it. It does not affect the area, whether it's red, uh, green, yellow, whatever, right? So I don't need to worry about the color blue. I need to focus only, focus only on the dimensions of the shape. Okay, and that was the, uh, the uh, abstraction. Now, algorithm. Now, algorithm is a huge area. It's not a trivial area. But we wanted to try to make it as simple as possible for the average person to understand. Okay, so what is an algorithm in layman terms? It is the solution to a problem. It's made up of steps, rules, uh, and to solve a particular problem. It consists, it's concise and ambiguous, clear from start to end. And why do you do that? The more that your solution is clear, it leaves no room for error. And it leaves no room for interpretation. So you wanna give it, you wanna make sure that it's, it's, it's you run it one time, 100 times, 1,000 times, it gives you the same result all, uh, every time. And that's why you have uh, algorithms. Now we come up with an example here, a silly example, but it should help you understand how to organize your thoughts when you're solving a problem. First part is making a T, for example. Now you might say, uh, okay, that's simple, but if you think about it, taking a T, making a T is a process, and a process has steps. So here I'm saying I'm making a black T, all right? Again, concise and specific. Okay, how do you start? Now, you might have a different start here. I, again, I leave it to you to, at the end to try to come up with your own way of making tea. All right. But and I chose this, for example. I'm going to start with getting an empty cup of tea first. All right. The second thing I want to do is that I'm going to get uh, determine the tea, or, uh, the tea type. Now, there are different types of teas, right? Whenever you see determine, uh, the check, things like that, that is actually a process by itself. And when you want to translate it to a computer solutions, you need to get more details about this, all right? So determine the type of T, and then after that, I, after I make the determination, I got, I got the selected T bag, and then 
put it in the cup, for example. Okay, and now, before, all right, so you can say we need, we need to make, determine the sugar first, right? Again, it's a, this is a process that you can, I mean, every person might have a, their own way of uh, making tea, and that is the variation in algorithms, all right? So determine the sugar if needed, and then after you determine the sugar, what do you need to do? You add the amount of sugar. Now, one might say, okay, maybe I could have saved time and say, got the kettle started before I do that, all right? But, you, you know, you, you could do this in parallel, or you can do, wait, do this first, and then do the second, all right? That's, again, variation in your algorithm. All right, continue. And then we're going to do, for example, now I turn in the kettle, wait for the water to boil, and then add the water to the cup, boiling water to the cup, then we leave it, steer it, uh, we steer it and leave it for a little bit of time to determine the, depending on how strong we want it and remove the tea bag after a minute again. After that, you say serve the tea and then you're done. So that is your, uh, you need to organize your thoughts in this manner when you're solving uh, and uh, coming up with an algorithm. Why? Because at the end, what you need to do, you want to take this algorithm and instruct the computer to do it for you. And the more details you have about this problem, the better your program is and the less errors you have. All right, that is algorithms. What should you do next? Now, what we want you to do in this video is that I want you to come up with an example, a real life example. It could be, for example, uh, making a pie. It could be, for example, changing the tire. It could be, for example, uh, uh, planning a wedding. Now, <laughs> planning a wedding is a lot more complex and it has a lot more uh, uh, abstractions and pattern recognitions and all of that stuff, right? But it's, it's just a way to think about uh, of, of different problems around you. So what do you do? You need to come up with a problem and then find those four key components of, uh, of computational thinking in it, in your solution, and then what you need to do is propose an algorithm and that will give you a better understanding uh, of, uh, of algorithms and then you present it to your friends. Now that is the first unit, the first video in this unit. Now it should have given you enough background about what is abstraction, the components of abstractions, and I repeat them again, uh, sorry, the component of computational thinking, I repeat them again, what do we have? Uh, we have abstractions, we have pattern recognition, we have decompositions, and we have uh, algorithms. All are important. Uh, a major focus in this course would be on uh, algorithms because that's how we translate it into computer uh, programs. And uh, we're giving you examples and should, you, should be enough for, to get you started with computer, uh, computational thinking. Thank you very much.